Hello everyone. We continue our discussion of intermolecular forces and the liquid state. In section 11.1, .1, we are trying to connect the previous content uh, from chapters you've already covered to the new concepts. And one of the older concepts that we looked at in the chapter on energy was the enthalpy of vaporization. I have reminded you of what we call the heating curve, something we looked at in the first semester in this figure occurs in a, another video. And there's a, um, a link to the YouTube video if you want to explore this figure uh, more carefully. Um, but every substance has its own heating curve, and this is the heating curve for water, as I mentioned before. And the length of these flat lines, that length is the amount of heat you would need to add to make that phase change, in this case, vaporization, and down here, in this case, fusion. And this occurs at zero because that's the freezing point of water. And this occurs at 100 degrees C because that's the boiling point of water. And you can see from the cartoon pictures here um, that this uh, enthalpy of vaporization is uh, requiring that we break these intermolecular forces, in this case, between water. Okay. So remember that this is just a heating curve for water. There are different heating curves. Um, in general, the enthalpy of vaporization is very similar to the enthalpy of fusion as well, but we'll focus on vaporization. Um, it's the energy required to convert one mole or one gram, depending on the units used for that variable, um, for the liquid to vapor uh, change at a given temperature. Now that has to be at the temperature or boiling point uh, for that particular substance. Uh, recall that sometimes we interchange the word heat and enthalpy. Um, that is concept we talked about in the first semester. Um, either one is acceptable in this case. As the intermolecular forces increase, you would understand that the enthalpy of vaporization would also increase because that would take more energy to break those intermolecular forces apart in order to make that phase change. Now, these values tend to be um, much smaller than make, breaking chemical bonds, but they are significant. Um, so that um, physical property can tell us something about intermolecular forces for substances. Um, so here we're looking at benzene and water, and we can ascertain quite a bit from this figure. Uh, benzene is a liquid at room temperature, just like water. Um, it is a toxic chemical, um, so it's not something that you would work with. Um, we used to work with this in the lab a little, a long time ago before it was a known a carcinogen. But anyhow, um, benzene is a hydrocarbon. It is a uh, ring. Uh, so all of these carbons are linked together um, in a six-membered ring. And it has uh, three double bonds that are resonance forms. Um, so often it's drawn with a dotted line circle in the middle. That's just excess information. We're going to talk about organic molecules a lot when we can. So this is an organic molecule and water. Um, so this is a tiny little water molecule compared to this big organic molecule. And oddly enough, the water actually has a longer line segment. Let's look at D to E. That length, remember, is the heat you would need to change that phase. So one can ascertain from these data that the water is going to have greater intermolecular forces than benzene. Um, so it really... Um, depends on what types of forces are present um, and molecular weight um, is also important. So this table um, gives us a, a little hint at what we're going to be talking about for the remainder of the chapter, at least most of the chapter, how these intermolecular forces affect physical properties. So in general, I can look at this table and say as molecular weight increases, so do these intermolecular forces for um, collections of these molecules. So this would be a collection of benzene molecules, collection of water molecules. So these are pure liquids. They're not mixtures, okay? And so when we talk about intermolecular forces, it's between the particles themselves, like particles. So benzene is close to water, and it's also close to methanol. And these... Um, are, are very interesting to look at because benzene has quite a bit more molecular weight uh, than methanol and water, yet its number is very close to both. 
Um, and you will note that methanol and water have OH groups. And we'll talk about later how OH groups let us know that there will be some hydrogen bonding involved there. So there's a little bit of an added intermolecular force that isn't present in these other examples. So one can ascertain, like I said, from this table, as molecular weight increases, generally speaking, your intermolecular forces increase uh, for enthalpy of vaporization. That means that value also increases because that's the energy required to break those intermolecular forces to go to the vapor phase. This would also be true for, um, for the most part, for enthalpy of uh, fusion. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk um, more about this hydrogen bonding and why these values um, we have to consider more than just molecular weight in determining what has the greatest intermolecular force. Uh, so we begin in the next video talking about other properties of liquids that are affected by uh, the intermolecular forces of substances.